we're only beginning to scratch the surface of how powerful human beings can be. And I think you guys and we are only beginning to scratch the surface of how powerful you can be. But we, we're going to need to, you know, we heard from earlier about 10xing the love. We're, we're going we're gonna to have to 10x ourselves mm -hmm. if we actually get to live in our lifetime in the future that you see. And that's important to me. Uh, so this can be an inflection point. You know, this week, Awesomeness Fest, this year, this moment in time, today, even this presentation can be an inflection point for you and who you get to be. So she mentioned that we're talking about the four faces of incorruptible power. And, you know, we've been talking about belief hacking. And I want to just get a sense, because I, I have a feeling this word is due for an upgrade. What do you all think? Can we upgrade our, our relationship to this word? I think we can. So what is power to you? What comes up? What's the positive and the negative? What's the light and the shadow? Popcorn style, throw them at me. What do you think of when you see that word or hear that word? Control. Anger. Anger. Influence. Influence. Aggression. Impact. Uh, aggression. Aggression. Yeah. Yes, yes. Energy. 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 Great, great. So you can see here already, we're painting this picture of power, right? And on the one hand, we're thinking about influence and impact, and yes. And on the other, we've got things like aggression and control. How many of you have heard the, the phrase, power corrupts, right? We're familiar with this as an idea. Now, so long as we have it, that if we're going to be powerful as humans and create the worlds that I've been inspired to hear from all of you that you want to create, if our story around us being all the way powerful has us being controlling and aggressive and manipulative and corrupt, we're never going to get there. So I really want us to reclaim this word. I want us to belief hack this word and rewrite our story. And I think if we can rewrite our story, that we can all leave this festival, this place, way more powerful. And it's one of the things that I'm most inspired to do, with, especially with women. You know, when I talk uh, to women and, and they tell me about what it's like when they're powerful, some of the negative stereotypes come up, like, um, bitch, we get called bitch, right? Which is a woman who's too assertive, mm -hmm. right? Or maybe we get called slut, a woman who is owning her sexual power a little too much, right? Or maybe even we're called a witch. I was called a witch today, which I found as a compliment. <laughs> I like that. I own that. <laughs> but a lot of us have witch. I mean, we burned those, those women, right? And so that cultural bias is in us. We're wary of that whole idea of power. We haven't made it safe to be powerful. And so I ask you, what if we could have a definition of power? What if we could belief hack this word today and create a definition of power that was incorruptible, right? So what is incorruptible power? I said we're talking about the four faces of power. What I mean by incorruptible is power that's fueled at its very essence by what I would call a transcendent value, right? And a transcendent value is a value that if you multiplied it across all time, across all people, everybody wins, right? So if there was more love in the world and you took that on as your mission, and your mission, I'm going to create more love in the world every way I can think of. Nobody loses. The world is a better place. You know, compassion is a transcendent value, right? Freedom is a transcendent value. And so we have these transcendent values. And the moment that we can be aligned behind a value like this, we can start to unleash our power. We can turn power and transform it into something that's corruptible to something that's trustable. We can turn it from something that takes our culture off track to something that is our compass for where we're on track. And that's what we want to do with you guys today. Mm -hmm. We want you to grab on and understand that there is a version of power that's incorruptible, that it's things like selfishness and greed and manipulation that corrupt, not power. Mm -hmm. 
Because I know every one of you is incredibly powerful. You know, you are literally creating this universe that you are inside of every day. And so if you recognize the incredible power that you have inside you and you go off, then I know that we're going to live in a better world. So we have a model. But before we get to that, yeah. I, you know, uh, one thing you guys may not know about us, we've, we've helped seven companies grow, not just to, uh, you know, 10 million or 100 million, but to a billion dollars in revenue. So we've, as the coach of the CEO or management team of companies like LinkedIn, we work with Apple, Microsoft, LSI, Cisco, uh, over the last 15 years in Silicon Valley, we worked with basically the most powerful leaders of innovative technology. And so we've seen a lot of versions of power. And the way that we've been able to help these companies grow so successfully so often is by giving the most power to the people with the best values. Not even necessarily the best ideas, but the best values, those transcendent values. And so we want to give you guys the most power. Because in meeting you and spending time with you in these last few days, we love what you love. So this is our, our bid for you to become more powerful and, and to demystify it by showing you how actually your po pro power profile can, can work. Yeah, so we have a model. <clears throat> and it's a really innovative model that is easy to remember. And so let's talk about what these four faces are of power. And as you're listening to us and seeing these faces, just see which one feels like is your face. Which one do you easily wear? And look at which ones feel to you like you have more nervousness, that you feel more resistance putting on. Now, in my view of power, I, I see it as kind of a, 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 an aspect of archetypal energy. And on each side, there are multiple faces, right? There is a masculine form of power, and there is a feminine form of power. Right? And equally so, as you have masculine and feminine forms of power, these are very different energies. But there's also an active form of power, the kind of power that you're entering in and penetrating the space with. But there's also a passive form of power. Right? And for the most part, we have a, our view of power. I know when I think of the word, you know, I have the vision of kind of like my father. You know, I grew up with a father. He was like 250 pounds, six foot four warrior. He was in Vietnam, you know, medals all over his chest. You know, he took up a lot of space every, every room he entered. Meeting him was fascinating, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how the, the, that mythology that you always marry, you know, your father or your mother. I, I, uh, I met uh, my wife to be his father and I said, holy, holy shit, you're marrying me? <laughs> I am not a 300-pound warrior with 700 hours of being under fire as a, a helicopter gunship pilot. But anyway. So, you know, and, and when we normally think about power, I think we think about this active masculine form of power. And the active masculine form of power is, just think of these as archetypal energies, but it's penetration, right? And, and an active masculine form of power you feel their values. They penetrate the space with who they are and what they think and what should feel this way and what should go that way, right? And it's a big energy and it really is penetrative. You know, when I saw Lisa Nichols, were you all at Lisa? Did you love her? Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, there's a feminine example of penetration. Didn't you feel her values just penetrating you? Yeah. Now, that's a, that's a penetrative woman, right? And these, these energies are in, in us, right? This is the masculine in all of us, right? When we penetrate, we let everyone feel who we are. We don't leave the space without you knowing that we were there, mm. right? And if you're uncomfortable going here, if you are one of those that sits in the back and doesn't want to be seen and isn't leaving every room different because you were there, this is the face that you need to work on, right? So this is your face. Mm -hmm. And I want to help you work on that. I want to help you stand up and penetrate every space you're in with your aesthetic for what the world should be. Because I know I'll be better off. And here's a picture of me with a sword. For some of you, 
I really resonate with the active masculine. I, I used to study eight forms of martial arts. So she's alive and well in me, that warrior essence, right? So who's not afraid to penetrate the space with who I am and what I think and what I feel. And she's being modest. Study means she's a brown belt in eight forms of martial arts <laughs> simultaneously. <laughs> so that's active masculine. The next form, you know, if you take go from the active to the passive masculine power, uh, what we've noticed is there's a tremendous power in silence, actually, in, in holding space. Uh, you guys have heard the term that they invented in California, holding space. Uh, I, and uh, it really means being receptive to anything, including the scariest thing, which is the unknown. Uh, I was working with a CEO of a startup. He had three co-founders, so there's the four of them together. They had just raised $70 million. So imagine four kids under 30 years old, and now they have $70 million in the bank to make their vision come true. And they were in crisis. The relationships between these founders were in crisis. I was working with the CEO. You know, Using what I've learned from Jennifer and this model, uh, I understood his power profile and that he was really strong in this area of holding space. So we decided to leverage this strength. He had a meeting and he met with the founders and he just said, okay, tell me what's going on for you. Tell me your concerns. And they were venomous. They said, we don't think you're a, a, a good enough CEO. We think you're bullshit. We want you out. We think this is horrible. This, the, you're ruining this place. You're going to waste this money. We don't believe in you. And they, and they just went at him for 30 minutes. And he just listened, and he held space, meaning he accepted, he completely included everything that they said, not reacting against, not validating, not invalidating. And he said at the end, is there more? And they said, yeah. And they kept going for another 30 minutes. And he said, OK, is there more? This lasted for four hours. At the end of four hours, he heard, had heard them, and they were kind of out of energy. They were like petered out. They'd talked themselves out, right? They were like, oh. and he said, is there more? And they go, no, I think that's, that's it. <laughs> and he said, um, well, I'll tell you what. I, we, we clearly need a CEO. And while it may be true that I'm not a good one or an adequate one, I've never done it before, neither have you, we don't at this point have another option. And the people that just gave us $70 million gave it to us with the assumption that I'd be leading. I think it would be more disruptive for us to change that than for us to move forward. So I'll make you a deal, he said. I promise to listen and incorporate everything you say into my decision making. And I promise that I'm going to be one, the one making the decision. So you have the option of sticking with me or leaving. And they still, those four people, are leading that company today. So that's an example of what, how you would hold space in a leadership context. Yeah, and if, just imagine that CEO, that all he could do was penetrate the space and just say what he thought. Imagine if you were working in that company, how there was no room for what you felt. There was no room for your ideas. After a while, even though that CEO might have been very powerful at penetrating the space and speaking his mind, you would feel like less and less of you could even be inside of this company, right? So you really want to, to use the idea of passive and active forms of masculine power. You're leaving half your tools on the table when you don't learn how to not fill the space with everything that you have to say, but actually leave room for everyone that's with you to contribute and share and synergize, right? So that is a way more powerful way of being. And so when we meet people, we look, OK, which one of these faces is it hard for you to go to? And how do we help you develop the range and flexibility of a true, what I would call an integrated leader? I want all of you to leave as an integrated leader for your projects, for your companies. Can you all feel the, the, the penetration energy, the active masculine in you? Can you feel that? And can you Located, all, yeah? You feel can, it? can you also feel where you hold space? And do you see how you're already, you prefer one to the other? You know, that you're, one is kind of your go-to? Balance is the key to becoming more powerful. 
So we've given you the masculine sides of power, but probably the thing I'm most passionate about is the feminine forms, right? Let's hear it from the women, right? What I know about this world right now is that we are incredibly imbalanced around these energies. And it's not that either energy masculine or feminine is right or wrong, it's the imbalance that's leading us with, to problems with the magnitude and urgency and complexity of what we're facing right now, right? And what we need to do, what I am so passionate about doing, is helping unleash all of you women to be more powerful so that we can right the imbalance, right? And I know a lot of you women are with me on this because I've been talking with you. So let's talk about the passive form of, of feminine power first, just to go in reverse order. Now, this form of power is attraction herself. This is seduction. This is you creating a gravity well where from a thousand paces you make eye contact and they just can't help it but occupy exactly the space that you're in, right? They just have to be exactly where you are and when they hear you speak, they're inspired. They're, they're like a moth to a flame. It's Helen of Troy who is famous for launching a thousand ships with just the look of her face on a man that she loved. Now this is a powerful form of power and I'm not just talking to you ladies about your sexuality. I'm talking to both of you, men and women, about your ability to empower not seeking power for your own state, uh, your own, but actually to draw people to you and then to create a field around you that empowers everybody, a flurry of activity. When you raise your hand and say, this is the vision I have, you have people from everywhere coming saying, I want to join your cause. You know, I think of JFK, you know, one of our presidents who was so incredibly charming and you just wanted to join his cause. You know, even Martin Luther King had aspects of both penetrative energy and also a gravity well around him that changed the civil rights movement in our country. Mm -hmm. right? And so this is a powerful force. And I want you women to be right with your energy here that most of the women that I talk to, they stifle a lot of it. They aren't, they're afraid to be sexual beings. They're afraid to be attractive and seductive in who they are and what they care about. And I'm here to tell you that the world needs that because it's the energy of love itself. The energy of love is gravity. It's mm. gravity, it's attraction. And this is the passive feminine form. She's not filling the space. She's drawing you to become your best self all around her. The, the passive feminine understands that everyone else is more powerful than just one person. And so if she can draw them, if the passive feminine in me can draw all of you together towards one single goal, and you know, the, there is a, uh, so Jennifer leads Camp Mystic at Burning Man. Has anyone either camped or heard of Camp Mystic? Yeah. Yeah. Come it, it, see us. It is an extraordinary place that erupts in two days out of just dust around Jennifer. And she, she just draws people to her who give their all to create truth, beauty, and an extraordinary environment. Thank you. It's, it's amazing. So, I mean, who, who doesn't want to sit on that couch? Come on. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, so we, it's, the, it's the understanding that the all is more powerful than the one. Uh, so next is uh, the active feminine. The active fit feminine is creative expression herself. Uh, I have a lot of active feminine in me because it's that spontaneous energy. The main difference between the active masculine of penetration and creative expression is that creative expression is sourced not from within and from your values, but creative expression is sourced from the needs of the field, of the environment itself. You cannot have a plan and be creative. All of the most creative people in the world, and I've written books and symphonies and just about everything that can be written, uh, I know that my most creative moments are when I get out of the way. Have you guys heard that? Have you heard creative people speak about this? Have you experienced it yourself? Mm -hmm. Flow state is the active 
feminine. It's when you get out of the way and you allow what's emerging in real time to come through. Uh, I was coaching another CEO, uh, this one, a woman, a, an incredible woman, and she was pitching uh, an investment from uh, uh, Sheryl Sandberg. She was going to ask Sheryl Sandberg for a million dollars, the first million dollar investment that she had gotten into her company. And she had spent weeks preparing for this meeting, going through her pitch deck we'd gone through. She was prepared like an expert witness in a federal case. She was ready to go. And she got in front of Cheryl, and she felt the field, and she felt the deck, and she knew it was wrong. She knew that what she was going to be pitching wasn't right. So she put it aside, she made eye contact, and she just spoke from her heart about the future that she saw, that she wanted to create, and how together they could create it. And Cheryl wrote the million dollar check. Not for the company she thought she was pitching, but for a new idea that was born in that moment. So that's the, yes, yes. 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 That's the, the active feminine. And I want to say one more thing about it, which is, the, the active feminine is creative expression, and this is the key to an infinite source of intelligence because you're tapping into what? Your intuition, right? Your intuition isn't the linear mind of experience that the active masculine tends to use. It's pulling from the field itself. It's literally all of the intelligence of the entire universe coming at you simultaneously, giving you the whisper of an impulse to draw the plan and pay attention to what's needed moment by moment, and it changes moment by moment. And it's you surrendering to that infinite intelligence. That's creative expression. That's so much smarter than me, and it's so much smarter than you. And that intuitive intelligence is part of what you tap into with the active feminine, mm -hmm. right? So these are our four faces of power. Find which ones are yours. Find which ones make up your power profile, right? See which ones you feel strong, which ones give you butterflies, which ones feel, you know, that you might have judgments over. And I just want to close with one thing, which is we, I want us to burn our ivory towers. I want us to burn the ivory tower. I think we build ivory towers around ourselves, and from those ivory towers, we either expect someone else to save us and save the world, or we sit there outraged but un unwilling to do anything, or maybe we sit there and think, gosh, there's nothing I can do. I can just sit here in my tower. And if anything, if I leave you with anything, I want you to burn that ivory tower. I want you to come off that tower and realize your incredible power as a human being, that you are the universe that you formerly thought you were just inside of. You're creating that. You're creating every moment of it. And if you want to see the world that you see as possible, you won't find it there. You won't find your strength and bravery there in that tower. You have to descend into the tower and put your feet on the earth. And from the earth, from feeling it, from locating yourself exactly where the, the world's pain is, exactly where the world's beauty is, that will source the strength and energy and power that you need to create that world. And I, for one, am excited at seeing who you become, who we all become, when you become the most powerful version of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.